Hello, how are how you? How are you? Very well, oh, thank you. Long time, no see. Long time. Clash of the Titans, I think. Yeah, well, oh, fucking that was a bit of a nightmare for me, Clash of the Titans. They didn't tell me we'd been cut, did they? But it's all right, it's all right. Well, it's all right, you're doing a bit of cutting up here, aren't you? Yeah, we're doing all right, yeah. <laughs> Boom, boom. Boom, boom. How are you doing? So, looking forward to this evening? I am, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I'm, I've actually moved to California now, so I normally get into a, a screening here and there, but I just couldn't do it this time, so... Oh, yeah. no, so we're not losing you completely, are No, we? not in a million years. You'd never lose me. I love the British film industry, but, you know, it's just... Uh, I think it's the next pro progression for me uh, with films. I've kind of done a, most of the stuff I can do here. Um, and I just kind of want to move on to try and do some bigger things. Not better things, bigger things. Yeah, no, that's understandable. Yeah. And also you might be able to kind of express yourself more as, a, as an actor. So. I think so, yeah, I think so. They're, they're receiving me quite well. I'm shooting a film at the moment with Martin Sheen and Richard Gere called The Double. I just worked with uh, uh, Val Kilmer on a film called uh, Blood Out, which is very similar to this one, Bonded by Blood, Blood Out. Uh, so, yeah, things, things are looking rosy. It's nice, yeah. What drew you to the, the part here of uh, Pat Tate? Um, it's an interesting story for me. I kind of grew up uh, around the uh, in, in that era as well, and I, and I know a few of the likely lads who I met. Funny enough, it's quite uh, weird. I met Pat and Tony and Craig. Just shook their hands out because I, was, I knew Nigel Benn and stuff and the people around them. But I just think it's a story that needs to be told correctly. I think um, there's been uh, one film. Everyone's saying there's two films. Rise of the Foot Soldier wasn't exa wasn't. It was about Carlton Leach, which is a friend of mine, and that was about his life story. And um, uh, Sean Bean did uh, the Essex Boys, which was mainly fiction. But this book is, uh, this film is uh, adapted by Bernard O'Mahony's book called Bonnie by Blood, which Bernard was. Nobody really knows the true story of what happened. Everybody knows their life story, the end, their demise. Nobody really knows about, but. Bernard O'Mahony was, was, was very close to him. He was their right-hand man, their henchman, call it what you want. He worked for them for years. He watched their rise from them being good guys to bad guys, and then he was there for their demise. So I think this book is, uh, this film is, is the closest story we can really get to the Essex Boys story, which is a phenomenon which people really, you know, are interested about. And I think hopefully we can put the lid on it. With, with this story, so... I think, do you think you owe it to the people that are deceased and some of the people that kind of, uh, what would you say? Families the, and friends? The, well, families and friends and also the victims to yeah, tell this yeah, story you know, properly. You know what it is? For the victims of these people, it, I don't really want to portray or let people relive what happened to these people. I mean, there's, this was probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever had to do because as an actor, it's ink on a page, you bring it to life and you develop the characters, but this is a true life character I'm playing. So. I mean, sometimes we're filming the domestic violence that he put his wife through and uh, the torture stuff that he did to innocent people. When I was actually doing it, it, it was really tough to do and it was harder because when you're doing it, you, you kind of sit back and think, somebody actually endured this. Somebody actually went through this. So for that side of it, no, to be honest. There's, there's the, the poor Leah Betts. There's, there's issues with the Leah Betts stuff, which I tried to swerve away from within the script and within that character. A lot of it I took out because I didn't think it was fair to you know, discuss it, dramatise it as if it's something. And, you know, on top of anything, I've, I do play a lot of villain roles and I've done the Football Factory, I've done Cassie's movie and I've played a lot of real life characters and I don't want it for one minute to be a glamorisation of, of, of villainy and, and what these guys done. I want it to hopefully be a deterrent so people can look at it and go, Jesus Christ, you know, this is this is you know, what happens. The other nice thing as well, I think, is do you, do you kind of look back and you mentioned that you, you'd met the people before. Yeah. You look back on the life that you had when you were... I could have easily gone that way. Yeah, you could have, but you've also come such a, a million miles. Yeah, away. I've, I've, gone full I've gone full circle, so it's not impossible. Listen, acting's a hard nut to crack, everybody knows that, you know, to, to get, to become an essential element in a movie or a project, it's very hard, and there's a very few of us, but, you know, Danny, Di, myself, we're kids that come from the flats, come from the streets, and, you know, and I've gone that way a little bit, a few times, I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, but nothing to what these boys do, nothing at that level, but we dabbled as kids, and it could have easily gone the wrong way, so it's, it's for each individual to, to, to make that decision. You know, and, and to, to make the right choices and just think about people around you. Think about who you're hurting. Think about what you're, what you're putting people through. You know, it's, it's easy doing it, but the, the people that suffer, it's so big. You know, and so just think about it. Does it, does it make you a better person? On reflection, seeing things like this? 
Absolutely, absolutely. I've, I've, grew, I've grew up in the flats and I grew up in the inner cities and we come from a very poor family and we had a lot of love. I'm not going to, you know, go back and play that old card. You know, I, I come from a very poor family and I had it hard. I didn't. We had a lot of love and we had a great upbringing. You know, you're a product of your environment nine times out of ten and I think it's a lot of the times it's for the parents to take control and, and be with their kids and, and provide support for them. Not so much as in the fact where you've got to throw them in their room and say to them, if you're not home by nine o'clock, I'm going to buy. Keep them busy. Keep them active. Take them out. My son's a professional footballer. You know, he's just signed for Portland in Oregon, in Washington. You know, he's, he's played for Chelsea. He's, he's been all over the place. But, you know, keep the kids busy. Tell them every day to go out and master free sports. You know, and it just if if they if they've got nothing to do, they're going to go to crime. If they've got something to do, you know, they're going to. Very true. They're going to, you know. So, and me being a parent, I'm, I'm talking from experience. So. Of course, definitely, Tama. I can see that you need to move on. Yeah, no problem. Lovely suit, by the way. Thank you, thank you. It's Alex. Lovely. Alex from Revolver. It's crazy. He said, "Listen, wear a suit." I was going to turn up in an old T-shirt. You know. That's true.